Okay, so we have differential reinforcement, which before we get started into the different forms of differential reinforcement, I want to make a SACMED card for. So grab a card, right on one side, differential reinforcement. And on the other, the definition. Differential reinforcement is varying levels or intensity of reinforcement contingent on the occurrence of a behavior and not providing reinforcement in the absence of a behavior. Okay, so that's our definition for differential reinforcement. Now let's get into um, the types of differential reinforcement. So we've got um, four specifically that we're going to talk about today. Um, and then we're going to also revisit these later on in our trading when we discuss more about data collection um, because differential reinforcement um, sometimes comes up, especially when we talk about using momentary time sampling or um, partial or whole interval type reinforcement systems. Um, so we will revisit this in the future. But for now, let's just define these. So we have our first here, and um, this is probably the most popular one that you'll come across. Sometimes it's actually overused in our field, but this is called DRO. DRO stands for Differential Reinforcement for Other Behaviors. So in DRO, what essentially occurs is we pick a target behavior that we want to see decrease. Okay, so for example, if it is um, yelling out in class or interrupting inappropriate verbals, okay? Then we might say every five minutes that this child is engaged in anything, any behavior other than yelling or screaming or interrupting out loud, we're going to provide reinforcement. But, as you can see, the problem with this is that it lends itself to accidentally reinforcing other behaviors that might be co-occurring during this time. Because as long as this child isn't verbally interrupting or having inappropriate vocals, then essentially we're providing him with verbal praise, right? But that doesn't mean that the child isn't doing other bad things, like he's non-compliant to doing his homework. Sure, he's not making any inappropriate verbals, but he's now just sitting at his desk with his head, you know, on the desk, down, not paying attention to anyone. And yet, as the plan is written, we're still supposed to be providing verbal praise. Um, so you can see how this needs to be used carefully, and that's why it's very important for us to make sure that when we write a plan, um, we use very specific terminology, and it's so um, conceptually systematic that no matter who picks it up, everyone is implementing it with fidelity in the same way. All right, so that's our DRO. Um, next, we're going to talk about DRA. DRA stands for Differential Reinforcement for Alternative. Be 
behavior. Okay? So we talked before about how sometimes we need to pick a target behavior that complements the other behavior in a way that if we're decreasing one, we want to make sure that we increase another behavior that is the same function based, okay, but much more appropriate. So for our example of inappropriate vocalizations in class, maybe we teach our individual to raise their hand to gain access to attention. So for our DRA, or differential reinforcement of an alternative behavior system, I might put something in um, and a ratio system. So per each occurrence, so that would be every one time, every time this individual raises his hand, you're going to provide reinforcement of some sort. Remember, reinforcement can be in a variety of ways. It could be a token. So that maybe he gets 10 tokens and then he trades in for a bigger reinforcer. Maybe it's just verbal praise that he gets. Maybe it's an edible, a small piece of candy each time he raises his hand. Okay, the reinforcer can vary itself. But the procedure is an alternative behavior. Something um, that's an alternative but more functionally appropriate to the original behavior. Okay, so that's our DRA. And then over here, I'm going to do DRI which is sometimes confused with DRA because differential reinforcement for incompatible behavior. Is technically an alternative um, as well, but incompatible is more specific in that it competes with the target behavior for decrease. It makes it really hard for that individual to engage in whatever the behavior is that we want to decrease. Um, so, for example, if we had an individual who has a hard time walking down the hallway without grabbing others or touching others, okay, maybe we call that inappropriate touching. Um, it would be hard to find an alternative behavior, okay? Um, an alternative behavior could be saying hi, right? It could be putting your hands in your pockets. It could be keeping your hands in front of you. Um, it could be carrying something. It could be all of those, but not all of those are incompatible with touching other people. The ones that were in incompatible are things that would take away from his ability to touch others inappropriately. So that might be carrying something while he walks through the hallway. But that's probably not the most functionally appropriate, right? Because it might not be a lasting behavior. He's not always going to have something to carry when he's in public or in the hallway. So maybe instead we teach this individual to walk with his hands in his pockets. Because that's something that we can teach in one setting and then we can generalize across all settings and can really be likely to be a good maintained behavior over time. And that is totally incompatible with touching others in, inappropriately because if his hands are in his pockets, he can't be touching others, right? So that's the difference between incompatible and alternative. And the last one we're going to talk about is DRL. and DRH, which I am not as concerned about you really getting to know um, because these are not things that you'll come across that often and if you do then the person within your workplace can inform you better about how to implement it. Um, but really this is differential reinforcement at a low rate and then the opposite over here this is differential reinforcement at a higher rate. So essentially what happens is we're looking to increase or decrease the frequency or intensity of a behavior. So the behavioralist on your case or the teacher might um, take baseline, figure out how often an individual is um, 
doing a behavior. So maybe you're looking to decrease something like uh, humming, okay? So you have an individual that hums every once in a while. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right? But um, it's socially significant because it's, it's distracting the others around him. It takes away from him having typical um, normal peer interactions. So you want to decrease um, the duration or frequency of his humming. So um, the person who designs this plan would take an initial baseline to see exactly what that um, frequency looks like. Um, and again, this is going to play into, depending on how you want to assess the data, and we'll get into this further in the future, um, but you might use something like whole time sampling or momentary time sampling. Um, and it really depends on how long the behavior happens, because if you do uh, time sampling one way, you're going to underestimate how often it occurs. If you do time sampling another way, you're going to overestimate. But Regardless, coming back to this for now, and we'll get into that more in the future, um, you're going to figure out how long it's occurring. And then you're going to pick a lower rate. And every time that this individual has that lower rate of humming, you're going to provide reinforcement. Okay, that's essentially what it is. Higher rate is the opposite. You want to see a behavior increase. So you're going to pick a higher rate. And every time that he does something at that higher rate, you're going to provide reinforcement. Um, something simple um, might be flashcard recognition. So on average, this individual can identify 20 flashcards per minute. You want to um, get his automaticity up a little bit more, so now you're only going to provide reinforcement if he gets 25 flashcards per minute. Okay, so you're picking a higher rate. All right. So those are our different types of differential reinforcements. And I'm sure that you will come across a few of these in your workplace. And now you'll know what the scientific terminology for them is. All right. So on to our next piece. We're going to touch base again on reinforcement in general. Um, talk about some strategies and just general wrap up of reinforcement um, and good key things to know going forward.